Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to Mnix Plays Path of Exile, Breach League Hardcore. Last episode we got our Chieftain Ascendancy, and uh, I'm happy, I'm excited. So now we are ready to, you know, go back into normal progression. Um, man, our attack sure is slow. Oh, so I switched out my quiver. I picked up the Craghead qu qu quiver. It doesn't have that much damage, but it does have reduced stun threshold. So hopefully when we start reducing, you know, when we add more uh, abilities to stun... Um, yeah, see, these guys are starting to get permanently stunned. And hopefully if we do enough of that, um, we'll be able to even permanently stun rares. So even though our DPS goes down, the fact that we lower stun threshold is a good thing. Let's clear up, clear out a couple more veil areas. Um, the more we do, the better, since the, it's technically part of our challenge. What's going on? Oh, ancestral power, okay. But the fact that the Siege Ballista now has slower projectiles, it looks a little weird, doesn't it? Now it looks just too slow. I don't know, maybe it's just me. Anyways. Uh, another level, let's get some more HP and then get this stun cluster as well, and then that'll be all of our stun nodes. And then we can start looking at damage afterwards, because damage is really starting to taper off, and... Until we get our second ascendancy, you know, even then, like, this is... Until we get better a better weapon, like, this is about as, as high as our damage can possibly go. So... Getting higher levels of damage is pretty important. You know, getting a couple more passives. I think we picked up all the totem nodes that can give damage, so now it's all about using our lionized falls and getting weapon damage. Hello? Hello? Oh, Kev. Hey, Kev. Aren't you, uh, aren't you supposed to be at work? You're at the airport. I see. Nobody can hear because he's typing to me. Uh, I'm recording an episode right now, actually. Oh, wait. Oh my god. No, it's not that bad. Oh, really? You're at the airport, huh? I can. Oh my god, it's crazy. I know. I'm trying to turn down sensitivity. All right, it's fine. It's fine. Let me just turn you down a little. Or you can put yourself on push to talk or something. I don't know. So how long are you? Are you back tomorrow then? Oh, this thing's still locked. What the hell? Where's the boss? What? Oh, here he is. Oh my god, this guy keeps moving around. How am I supposed to hit him? Hey. Hey, it's a lot better. So I'm I'm fighting... Um, oh my god. I'm fighting the Veil boss, Thornrunner. He's like... He causes puncture or something? And he has like this permanent... Uh, shield around him that stops projectiles from hitting him and my siege ballistas can't kill it what do i do so, why don't you just leave it's a veil area i want to kill him nah. all right no i'm gonna man up what's the way how do we do this let's get out of there does he regen if he doesn't regen i can slowly get him So how was uh, how was your time in Manila? It's all right. I spent most of it in traffic. Yeah. Uh, conference was interesting, I guess. Yeah, it was so hard to not drink. Not to drink. Everyone was just like, "Oh, let's go out for a drink." Oh like, well, yeah, that is pretty hard. I'll, I'll have a coke. <laughs> no, I can't. I can't drink. I'll have rum and coke. Yeah, that's that's what you'll say, and people will be like, "Okay, that's fine." 
Did people did people give you any uh give you any grief over it? No, actually, they they made fun of me for being really dumb. Oh. Like everyone around here is like dirty. Right. How long's your how long's your wait for? How long's my what? Your wait. Uh, I board in forty minutes. Okay. So I picked up uh, that stun quiver. Craghead? Craghead. I'm still waiting for Crag Fall. But I gotta upgrade it in Merciless. Right now, the only things I can stun are white mobs. Hopefully that changes soon. Let me turn it down a bit more. For those of you watching, this might be a little annoying. Um, but Kevin is lonely and he needs friends. Well, I think it's because the announcements are pretty loud, but you can't do anything about that. Just log on to PoE and type. Does that work? Alright, our Siege Ballista is doing pretty well actually. And like, I know that the damage is bad, but I can see how if we were to do enough damage, the stun potential is... There's potential here. There's definitely potential here. I'm excited to get this build going. Like, look, we have double Siege Ballistas. Okay, that didn't stun anything. I think once I get like a couple more stun nodes, and I add the stun gem, it'll be really good. Like, how often does this guy get stunned? I guess not that often. We're not there just yet. I definitely need the stun support gem. I can't just use my quiver. And I don't even have a stun threshold on my belt. So I need to get that too. Uh, my belt, I have it on my quiver. And then I need to get the stun threshold on the tree. So that's another 15%. But the gem is the biggest deal because that gives at least 20 or 30% chance to stun. The way stun threshold works is, uh, I believe it's you do a certain percentage of damage, and if it's more than three percent of their max HP, or depending on how much stun threshold is, I'm planning to get around like eighty percent stun threshold. So, if I can do at least, uh, uh, like two percent of their HP per hit, it'll be like a fifty percent chance to stun. That's like. That's like retard math, but it's somewhere around there. It's like guesstimating. All right, all right Kev's online. Okay, let's turn on the strong box. I mean, overall, like damage is fine. It's pretty good. The breach is the only place where it's, it's a little worrying. God, this internet is garbage. Airport internet. I mean, like, you got the worst of it, right? Philippine internet, and it's Philippine airport internet. So you combine those two. Oh, there he goes. He dropped. That's pretty bad. I wish uh, Path of Exile would add, like, chat integration with other programs, like Discord. Like, I, th I know they once did a thing where it's like, there's Twitch chat in-game. And then when people join your Twitch channel, they can like type and then you can see it in-game. Like, I thought that was really cool. But, uh... Like, I would want that. But it doesn't exist here. Which is very sad. It doesn't exist for Discord, at least. And at this point, so many people use Discord, and it's like, why not, you know? But I'm, I'm sure that's like on the lowest, like the bottom of PO or GGG's priority list. 
The absolute bottom. Alright, armor, strong box. Okay, let's get out of here. Nope, nothing important. There's a breach. I guess we'll try it out. Like I said before, breaches are pretty dangerous now. Like, cruel breaches are just... It's no joke. Okay, here we go. Try attack Porygon. What character is that? That's a level 1 character. Oh god, I'm stuck in the doorways. Open up the hand. Open up this hand. Okay. Fair. Okay, like I was complaining about breach clear speed, but this isn't all that bad. Look how big the breach has gotten. Am I in normal? No, this is cruel. You know you're doing pretty well if you need to check, like am I in normal or am I in or am I in cruel? <laughs> no, this is this is pretty okay. The fact that we can run around while our totems like dish out most of the damage. And tank most of the damage, more importantly. I think, uh... Gives me some comfort. In Breach League. Oh, okay. Fight a boss yet? No, I haven't fought a boss yet. I haven't even found one. I think I found, found it once, but... The clear speed was so low that... I only got to mouse over it really quick and I had to run away because I got surrounded. And uh, that was off stream, so immediately, the moment that happened, I just kind of logged myself off because I was like, okay, if I if I die like off stream, that's going to be the worst thing ever. So I just stopped. I was just like randomly farming. Okay, well, here's another breach. This one is a lot more open, so this one is kind of worrying. Playing a trackpad. Oh god, the quantity is crazy here! Oh shit. Ah! I accidentally clicked on the transmute. clicked on like uh, a dialogue page and my character got frozen in place. There's a hand. Oh, what is that crap on the ground? Oh my god, there's so much stuff. Okay, I think there was like a giant pack down here, but I couldn't risk it. I couldn't run over there. They were doing way too much damage. I need more armor, I think. Okay, well, we got a reg regret orb out of this breach, which is pretty good. And then we got to pick up the gem. Did I get it already? Oh, Baleful Gem. Okay. So after talking to her, we still have to go to the Weaver's Chambers. I actually forgot to do it last episode. Uh, do you have a uh, Granite Flask? No? I guess I'll take an Amethyst. Return. If I do incinerate casts with cast when channeling glacial cascade lightning tendrils, will they proc in proper order? I think so. But there's like a delay between casting, right? So they can't cast all at once. There's a 0.5 second delay. I think it'll be in proper order. So is this elemental equilibrium cast when channeling incinerate? With Glacial Cascade and Lightning Tension. That's pretty insane. You think up some insane builds. I hope it works. I think it should work. Okay. Uh, here. 
Veil pieces. Let's put that back here. Alright, let's go pick up uh, that staff from Weaver's Chambers. Oh man, the breaches! They are so friggin' scary! Okay. So we probably go over here. Typically, the Weaver Chambers is always the opposite end of the road from the waypoint in Western Forest. So that's the general rule for finding the Weaver Chamber. Okay, there is a breach here. Let's open it up. Open her up. I started watching Westworld. Have you seen it? I don't know what the hype is though. Like, it's pretty good, but at, at the same time, it kind of don't get it like it hasn't pulled me in yet I'm just watching it because it's like I'm two episodes in so things haven't gotten messed up I guess oh my god what's happening here it gets good okay I'm looking forward to it like for now it's kind of like okay I'm watching it because everyone is hyping up like about it so it's kind of it feels like a duty to watch it, you know? But, uh... I'm waiting for it to get good. Have you ever watched It's Always Sunny? I haven't. You were raving about it for a while. It's funny. Maybe I'll Is that still on Netflix? If it's still on Netflix, I'll watch it. One of the most ridiculous characters on that show is playing William in Westworld. Oh, I see. Which one's William? Oh, okay. Weaver's Chambers. I'm tired. The two buddies. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I mean, I like the concept. What is a pussy? Okay, I know who, who it is now. I like the concept of Westworld. There's like a lot of genres nowadays where they talk about like... You know... Technology... Like messing people up or whatever. Or like... Sort of virtual worlds. I think I watched a movie on Netflix the other day. It was called The Call Up or something like that. It was like Sword Art Online, but movie. But Hollywood. And awful. <laughs> like, absolutely awful. But there are so many movies like that. And in Black Mirror, it's like the same idea, right? Oh god, bacon hurts. Why? I think it's a very similar idea where they talk about how technology kind of shapes the world and people have existential crises, stuff like that. I'm not too sure though, I only watched like one episode. Okay, this looks like a very safe breach. Doesn't look too bad. Why the hell isn't Lightning Tendrils channeled? Good question! I I always assumed that it was channeled, so that's... I was very confused when you told me it wasn't. Yo, I, I'm doing like the weirdest Weaver chamber layout ever. 
there's like a vacant hole in the middle of the map. And I think it like... That messed up the map a little. Because I've never done a layout like this before. Like, you know typically how Weaver's Chambers, you go either left or right, and then you go downwards? This one I'm going upwards, so I don't know where the exit is. It's so weird. I feel like Vagan fuck with the layout. Okay, I think this is it. Alright. Oh god, the weaver hurts. Basically, I can't. So how much would you bid for a business class upgrade? If I actually wanted one or if I didn't want one, there's a difference. Do I want it? Or is it just like, oh, okay, I'll take it. Yeah, I saw your flu message. Did you bid for one? Are you bidding for one? So apparently you can bid, for those of you who are watching, you can bid for business class upgrades on an airplane. And the minimum bid is $50. Make it fast. I think I would bid 100 bucks for business class. Travel far. Maybe more. 100? 100? 50 pesos? Speak. Wait a second. 50 pesos in Canadian dollars. Philippine. 50 is like a buck. Oh, that's a minimum bid? Holy crap. I bid 100. Well, how much is it regularly to, to upgrade to business class? Like 200 bucks? Return if you must. I mean, I would need to know how much it is normally, right? You can't just say, hey, I'll give you a business class upgrade for $200. And then you're like, well, $200 sounds pretty cheap. And it turns out you can normally do it for like, you know, 250 or whatever. And it's like, eh, it's not that worth it if that were the case. The tree that you... Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, I would be willing to s to spend like 100 to 150 for a business class upgrade, I think. Depending on the fact that most people don't know. Yeah, you should know. You should know. <sighs> Let's try and get a... Do you think it's worth it to take attack speed from the master or physical damage? Physical damage might be better or just straight passive point. I think it's like 18%, maybe 15, 16, 16, crap. POE bandits. Uh, 16% physical damage. 8% attack speed doesn't seem all that worth it. Really doesn't seem worth it. Especially since if you use the faster tax gem, that's like 30%. And you face diminishing returns, right? But 16% physical. That's like two nodes, right? So is two nodes worth more than a random... Or one and a half nodes. Is that worth more than one random passive? Maybe not. I need damage anyways. Yeah, I think... Oh, you would take the point? I think I, I would take the physical though. I don't know. 
like if there's one thing that I don't have much of, I can at least use to path somewhere else. That's a good point. Mm, I don't know, I'm still debating. I'm just very limited in damage nodes on my tree because I'm not going to Duelist or Ranger. That's why I'm considering it. Oh, a Regal. So I switched out my flasks and I don't have a bleed flask and I'm doing a breach. And they're puncturing me. This is a problem. Are there any hands around here? Oh my goodness. A splinter, increased duration, another level, which is nice. Getting close to that stun cluster. Alright, I can't play track that. I don't expect you to. Do I use Exile Craft? I don't. I use a uh, PoE DB. Alright, I'm killing Creighton. But the one Curtis showed me was pretty good. What was that one called? PoE Planner. That one was a pretty good one. But I like PoE DB because there's other crap too. Besides a, a passive tree. All right. Your death had more honor than your life, Creighton. Creighton down. Success. Going. <laughs> Slowly building up our currency. I mean, we still don't have much. Two chaos and sixteen elks. But uh, it's getting there. Okay, now we go help Oak. I'm gonna go advance against your advice, and I'm gonna take that one point five points. <laughs> Is this the one point? Sixteen percent physical. I guess it's not that bad. This build is, yeah, that's true. This build is always gonna lack damage. That's, I think, that's what's gonna happen. It's not gonna have enough damage. So the more I get, the better, I suppose. Oh God, it's Magnus. Stone Thorn, fucking Flame Blast, Pizza Blaster. Quite sure that's the worst rogue exile. Okay, let's find Oak. Where the heck is he? Just follow the water, right? That'll take us to Oak. Supposedly.
My build is too strong. Crash my POE client. Alright, that's fine. You're boarding? Alright. Safe flight. See you later. Are you gonna be on tomorrow? Or I guess tonight? Okay. Later. Hi, I would like to buy your increased duration. Of course you would want to buy my increased duration because Nobody can get their hands on increased duration for some reason. Here, I shall invite you to party. Trade. Increased duration for an elk. That's my not secret, not so secret trading strategy. Which is uh, sell a bunch of increased durations for one elk each. People will message you non-stop. I'm not doing it this league because I just, I can't handle it. Uh, help oak. We're gonna take that 16% physical damage. Yeah, I can't handle it. Last time around, there were just way too many people whispering. And I couldn't play my game. Like, it felt like I was losing money if I didn't go out there and trade with people. So, this time around, I'm just not gonna put any increased durations on sale. Unless I actually find it myself. Because typically what I do is I buy increased duration for one chance orb. In Act 3. Act 3? Yeah, Act 3. And then I sell it for an elk. So I do some flipping. And eventually, you know, you can make a lot of money through it. It's quite slow, I have to say. Um, but I think I did something close to like 120 elks in like 2 or 3 hours or something like that. But it was it was a lot of work and you don't get to play, not really. Like, you would be, like, fighting in a zone, and then you would get through two mobs, and someone would whisper you. And you, you would trade, you come back, and you get through two more mobs, and then another guy whispers you. Like, you're, you're killing two mobs at a time, really. So, I, eventually I was like, you know what, forget it. I'm not doing this anymore. Okay, so let's try and get through this area real quick, and then we can call it an episode. We just got a s superior LMP, by the way. Like, that was a very low-key pick pickup, but that was uh, it's a good item. As a matter of fact, I'm going to start leveling the superior one instead. Oh god. Note to self, don't open strong boxes that are unidentified. That almost killed me. That was close. I almost made a fatal mistake. That would have been it. That would have been the end. All because I was stupid. Okay, there's a breach. And... In essence? Oh, please. You're spoiling me too much. Okay. I mean, we're not doing too much damage against this guy. Mostly because his freaking totems are freezing. We're slowing mine. They're chilling my totems and reducing the attack speed even further. Kind of annoying, actually. There we go. All right, breach. Come and get some. Now, just gonna sit in the corner here. Hope for the best. Oh god, why is this so... There's like vortex everywhere. I'm being slowed. Uh. Oh god. This is scary. 
Gotta get out of here. Okay. Breaches, man. They're so tanky. I can't actually do them properly. Like, I can survive in the breach by running around, but we're not killing anything. That's a bit of a problem. I think I have to go this way. We need more damage somehow. Or maybe it's time for a new bow. Or maybe it's time to upgrade to Death's Opus. Like, there's a lot of things we can do. We could get Reign of Splinters, which would allow us to drop GMP, which would allow us to get a damage gem. Or at the, at the very least, we, it would allow us to, you know, not use a gem that reduces our damage. And maybe that's the way to go. Rain of Splinters into a Jewel Socket, which would gives us, give us additional projectiles. For reduced damage, yes, but GMP is less damage, which is a much bigger deal. 32% less damage, in fact. That's a very big negative modifier. Or multiplier, in fact, right? There's a difference between reduce and less. So reduce takes your total damage. Say you have 100% damage, increased damage, and then it says... You know, 30% reduced damage, so you would have 70% uh, increased damage. But if it's 30% less damage, it's like uh, like you're doing you're doing like a 1.3, right? Did that make sense? So it's typically you have 100% increased damage and. Uh, 100% increased damage? Is that a good example? 100% increased damage and 10% um, more damage. So you have those multipliers. So there's actually a difference there because you first apply all your increased, you add them together, and then you multiply your more damage multipliers. So that's why those are called multipliers and the increased aren't multipliers. So uh, if I have... 100 damage 100 damage and I have 100% increased damage I would have 200 damage right uh, but if I have and then I had after that 200 damage I have a more multiplier of 10% so I take all of that and I times 1.1 so 1.3 more multiplier is actually better than 1.3 uh, increased damage multiplier because you take all your increased damage multiplier uh, in increase damage values first and then you multiply all that all of that right so basically the end of the end of the day uh mo like multiplication is better than like addition essentially so you'll slay the bamath cultist i did not explain that well well at all actually the more i think about it i explained it like an idiot and probably only idiots will understand <laughs> what i'm saying only fellow idiots will understand. I actually know even they won't understand. That made no sense whatsoever. One day I will explain all of the mechanics in a thorough guide where I, where I actually you know think about everything I'm talking about. But right now it's just a stream of words. How do I explain multipliers and increase damage? Man, I don't know. I can't math. You know what? Until somebody asks me the difference, I guess I won't need to explain it. Okay. So we do have a prophecy here, and it's part of a prophecy chain. I don't know if prophecy chains are part of... Part of 
part of the challenges this time around. So it might not be as important. I know that last league, Prophecy Chains were part of the challenge challenges. Um, but this time I don't think it is. So maybe we won't need to be as careful when doing them. Or as thorough, I guess. Because it's not part of, you know... It's not necessary in order for us to complete all of our challenges. Right now, the focus is, you know, leveling. And then when we get a chance, try to do anything that will help us complete our challenges faster. That's basically the goal. Okay. Artisan Strongbox, Ice Nova. I just stand here. There we go. Where the he heck is the cultist, though? Seriously, I don't see him. It's the purple league, bleach league, breach league. So I decked myself out in purple if you haven't, if you couldn't tell. I got a couple of MTXs. We got a purple bow. We got purple footprints. Our gloves are purplish, and so are our boots. Our helmet, not so much, and neither is our chest armor. But you know what? Nobody's perfect, so we're pretty close. We're pretty close to perfect. <laughs> That's not true. There are some people in PoE who are just freaking styling, you know? Like, they have some really cool MTXs going for them. I'm pretty jealous. Oh god, what's happening? All right, prophecy complete. Essence of greed. There we go. Oh, it's an apparition. Go and you there. Let me bend your ear for a uh okay fine vegan, let's do it. What's the time? Forty three minutes? Defeat him within the time limit. That might be hard. I mean I'll give it a little college try, but if he starts healing up, Vegan's one of those heroes that actually uses uh, uses potions. He cheats like a regular person. I've had uh, that, was, that was pretty easy, actually. Alright, let's uh, finish up, get the cavern's waypoint, and then we can call it a day. Let's get that done. Get her done. DPS is at 733. With frenzy charges, it's at 876. I mean, it could still be better. 920 after rallying cry. There's still room to improve there. And it has to improve. Otherwise, otherwise this build is dead, you know? Obviously, Siege Ballista builds can always be saved. We can just go, you know what, F forget it, we're not gonna go stun, let's just go pure damage. Uh, but, 
The focus here is stun, perma stun with Siege Ballista. So I'm hoping it works. Which is also why attack speed isn't as important to me as physical damage. Because the higher the damage, uh, the higher the chance of stunning. A bunch of small hits isn't going to stun anything. Even though, you know, overall the DPS might be more. Whereas one big hit has a much higher chance of stunning uh, a rare mob. Because you need to do at least like 2 or 3% of the boss's HP in one hit. If you have crazy high attack speed and small damage or low damage, you know, that's not going to happen. So, I mean, even now he's not really getting stunned. Which makes sense. We don't, we're not using the stun gem. We don't have any stun threshold on our tree. We only have the quiver. And we don't even have it on the belt, do we? Yeah, I don't even have stun threshold on the belt. Which apparently you can get like uh, another 15%. So we're looking at quite a bit of stun... Stun threshold... Reductions. So for those of you who are unaware, the way the stun mechanic works is that there are two stun values. There's the stun duration, which dictates how long a monster can get stunned for. And there's also a stun threshold. And what stun threshold means is that there are some calculations and then you get a percentage. Uh, so say you, the percentage is like 2%, right? Um, which means there's a 2% chance of something getting stunned. If you lower the stun threshold, it means that you can raise the percentage of something getting stunned if they get hit by for like 3% HP or something like that. So the higher stun threshold that we have the lower amount amount of damage that we need to do in order to uh, here the stun threshold determines how much damage can stun something so the less that the more stun threshold we have the less damage we have to do to stun something as a matter of fact this belt I probably want to replace it right here it's a pretty decent belt looking at it Rolling. it has Less life. Oh, no, no, it has more life. It has a lot more life. It has strength, stun threshold, energy shield. It doesn't have much resistance. But armor resistance, it's maxed big time. So we're good there. Yeah, okay. Hello. Let's sell this one. It's not that good. Return if you must. And let's deposit this one. That's a leveled gem, so I'm gonna keep that. I'm gonna sell these. Keep the hammer. Keep the flasks. Essences. Uh, hatred. Greed. Okay. Uh. So yeah, we got the waypoint for Vale, for the caverns, I mean. So next time around, we're going to be completing Act 2. We need to complete Cruel Quests. Oh, we actually need to do uh, Through the Sacred Ground as well as the Great White Beast. So we actually need to work on the challenges next episode as well as doing the Vale boss. Um, so those are... That's probably what's on the itinerary for tomorrow, or for next episode. Uh, damage is always an issue, but hopefully over time we can get that raised. But yeah, that's the end of this episode. Thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, as always, you can leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more updates in the future. Otherwise, keep in touch, guys, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Mm,